You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media Euro 2020 show. I'm Scott McPike, delighted to be your host as always. Joined as always by Shankers. Shankers, how are we? I am good, Scott. The last few days I've been... Some exciting games, so plenty of goals, plenty to talk about. We're joined by Rory Loy as well. Rory, you've seen players start at Wembley. Do you, does that bring back memories for you? <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> no, Sh- as Shankill says, um, I, some, I, I don't know if I've ever seen two games back-to-back as, as action-packed as that. Goals, um, the standard of goals, standard of player on the park. It was, it was phenomenal, so looking forward to getting everyone's thoughts on it. Definitely. We're joined by a special guest tonight from the Team of Our Lives podcast, a very happy Ollie Jenks. Ollie, how are we? <laughs> very, 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 very well. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm, brilliant. Try, I'm trying not to smile too much. <laughs> but yeah, th- thanks for having me, Scott. Much no, appreciate. brilliant. Absolute pleasure. We'll get into, as Rory says, we've, we've, we had a very, very good day yesterday. Shankers, where does it rank as a, as a day of watching football? It must be up there. It was for me. I definitely was, especially... Now we we're at this stage of the tournament where we're we're very neutral viewers, so we just want good games, plenty of goals, plenty to talk about, and that's exactly what we got yesterday. It's probably one of the days that stands out for for all the tournaments uh, that I've previously previously watched. So a good day all round. Yep, definitely. But we'll get straight in. Spain booked a place in the quarterfinals with a five to the extra time one over Croatia. Brilliant performance from Spain all in. They managed to get the two goals late on. After the 90 minutes from Alvaro Morata and Orazabal, it was Spain went 3 1 up. We obviously, had a, a dodgy goal to kick the game off for Croatia, and then Croatia managed to get back into it. Rory, what was your overall thoughts on Spain's 5 3 victory over Croatia? Um, it was ugh, entertainment value was through the roof, especially the way Croatia came back. Uh, I think either team could have won it, and you couldn't really have argued either way. However, um, I think it was the, the the drama at the end that that goal going for Croatia. And see when they scored that equaliser, um, or sorry, the second goal to get you know to to, to be one off equalising. I think everyone just kind of felt they were going to get that equaliser, and ah, it was it was phenomenal. Um, they're an unbelievable pass inside. Listen, Morata Morata is getting an awful lot of stick at the moment. His finish yesterday was sublime. Mm-hmm. His conversion rate compared to other strikers potentially isn't great. However. I think that Spain are that good with the ball that they'll create enough chances for them to, to take one. Um, so, I, like I said, Spain are a great team to watch. I think we judge them on their golden era of when we were all grown up over the uh, two Euros they won in the World Cup. However, you know, this team plays a lot of good stuff. The boy Pedri is going to be there for years to come and then he's next to, to Busquets who's been there and done it. They've got a nice wee balance all of a sudden. And I think... It's not a lot of pressure on Spain, I wouldn't have said. Within Spain, there will be, but I don't think coming into this tournament, there was all that much expected of them. So uh, they're kind of flying under the radar and they're, they're doing enough. So it'll be interesting to see, but they're a lovely team to watch and so are Croatia, to be fair. But I think either of those two teams could have went through and, and anyone would have been happy to watch them in the next round. Yeah, definitely. Spain scored one goal in their first two games against Sweden and Poland. They then now scored 10 in the last two against Slovakia and Croatia. Oli, does that put Spain in as kind of front runners to lift the trophy, do we think? Yeah, I, I think so. I agree largely with what um, Rory is saying as well. I am, um, you know, Luis Enrique seems to be trying to replicate the kind of his Barcelona days a little bit with, with, with the squad he's got there. I am worried about Morata. I know you're a fan, Scott. I just don't. He's so he's a bit like Harry Kane's performance this tournament. He's very inconsistent. Got his goal uh, yesterday or whenever it was. Can you rely on him? I'm not too sure you can. And then where are the, where are the other goals coming from? I know, I know they scored 10. It sounds stupid to say that, but when the, when the pressure comes in the quarterfinal and the semifinal, yeah, as, as Rory said, good passing team. Can you rely on Morata to finish off? Maybe they can. Maybe they're kind of not dark horses, but silver horses. Um, but you, you can't write them off. Yeah, definitely. Shan, because what was your overall thoughts in the game? Do you enjoy it? I, uh, I mean, as a, as a neutral, you, you've got to enjoy it when there's a game uh, that many goals, as, as Rory said, when, when Croatia got the second, it was almost 
Like you just kind of knew, and, and the fans and the whole team was was kind of sucking the ball into the net for for the equaliser. So for entertainment value, it was really good. Spain, pan, pan Spain, afford to concede three goals in a tournament and and not win a and uh, sorry score three goals in the tournament and not go through in ninety minutes. I get when you come up against that a stronger team. Uh, in the next round, but if they go through to the, the semi-finals and they come up against the stronger teams, I, I think the other teams will have too much for them. They've, as Rory said, they're, they're good at passing the ball and keeping the ball and stuff like that, but can they rely on Marata, as Oli says? I, I don't think so. His finish yesterday was, was unbelievable in, in what we know he's capable of doing, but I don't think he's He's going to go and score three, four, five goals. I would love to be proved wrong because I, I like Marat as a player, but I just think they're a kind of semi-final. I wouldn't be surprised to go and see them get to the final, but I just think there's other teams in the tournament that have got too much uh, quality compared to I think if they do, Shankers, that'll, be a result, that'll be a result of other team, other stronger teams being knocked out. Um, I think if they... I could give them a lift as well. Aye. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I, I was impressed with Spain at the I was impressed with Spain how they managed to to obviously they go the they go three one up and you thought you thought the game was done. It was the same in the game later on that we'll touch on in a minute. But they fought back and got the two goals. It was two really good goals. And I think I do think that Spain team are they're beginning to clack at the right time. Sarabia's come in, Ferran Torres coming off the bench. I mean, they've got that talent and abundance just coming off the bench and making Really good contributions. See the, see, the only thing with Spain, I think, see when they got 3-1, it's as if they're too proud to sit in and keep, keep aye, it tight. And aye, they, and want see it. they want to just keep playing the same way and that effectively cost them. Uh, I mean, they could have went on to lose coming back, uh, uh, conceding two goals late on. It's as if they're, they're too proud to, proud to just keep playing the, the same way all the time and, and try and go on for goals and make it four or five, whereas you just could sit tight and, and see it the three one you're into the next round instead of they make it difficult for themselves. Eventually they got through, but it, it could have gone the other way. Definitely. It seems mad to say as well. I know kind of all he was saying, but the keepers at Simon, who I hadn't actually known much of, I know, ah, he I, I know he conceded three goals, but he made a couple of crack saves as well. And I think that Going in deeper into the tournament, you need a good goalkeeper. And like I said, I don't know much about him, but there's a reason why he's playing in front of the, the goalkeepers he is. And I thought, despite having conceded three goals, made a couple of wonder saves. Obviously, <laughs> obviously Uni Simon, who's just been bigged up by Rory there, did make a howler. What, was, what, was thought, what do you think of that? Is there much you can do about that? Um, yeah, there's a lot you can do about that. I mean, kick it for a start might help. It is football <laughs> after all. Um, well, I did love what the commentator said, though, because Spain had scored two or three own goals this tournament. And as he was saying that, the third one went in from 45 yards out. Um, and it was, unfortunately, Pedri, who I think got yeah, the own goal. Pedri got, yeah, Pedri got the guy. Pedri um, got the, yeah. Which is a bit unfortunate for him. But as uh, Rory was saying, he did, make, he did come back and make some good saves. And he did prove a point, uh, particularly in extra time as well. So he's... By no means written off um, as an England fan, you know, Rob Green, 2010, <laughs> say no more. You know, things don't get much worse than that, particularly when it's against the Americans, you know, at least at least Croatia uh, are half decent side. Mm -hmm, definitely. But we'll move on to the game that took place after that. It was an absolute thriller as well. Shock of the tournament so far. Switzerland got, got it done in penalties against the world champions. Again, Severovic. Give Switzerland the lead, lead in France after a poor first half come back. Two exquisite goals for Benzema and then a, th a third beauty for Pogba, which made it 3-1 and we thought the game was done. Severovic get Switzerland a goal back and then Gavranovic got the equaliser, which sent it to extra time and then penalties where Kylian Mbappe, the man many people, including a couple of people on here, have thought would be the, the man of the tournament. And it turned out he, he missed the deciding penalty. Shankers, another thrilling game. Just give us your overall thoughts. Ah, uh, yes, it's pretty similar to the first game. It's a neutral watching it. Yeah, goals, missed penalties. It was end to end stuff. Pretty poor defensively for France. I know it's obvious saying that they conceded three goals, but for a French side with with that much quality, with with likes of Varane, uh, I think it's keep Mbappe at the back, Hernandez, Pavard, four top defenders and. Every time Switzerland went forward, they looked dangerous and looked as if as if they could have scored. And I was surprised by France, but they, they, what they what they lacked defensively, they made up 
for attacking wise. Definitely in the second half as as well. Probably probably unfortunate uh, in Switzerland's part that Switzerland never actually went on with a missed penalty. If they score that, the game changes in its head. So it was it was good as a neutral, but France will be disappointed. Three one up, a bit like Spain. They they could have. I'm not saying go five at the back and and part the bus, but. They could have managed the game a whole lot better than, than what they did. They made it to Switzerland, fought to the end, and it was a great finish. The, the last one, he's, the third time he's took the ball it's a great finish. But I think France can manage that game better and, and they see themselves through the next round. But as you said, a couple of Ben Davis, one of the, I'm, I'm saying he meant it, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt for the first touch. Uh, if I'd done that on a Saturday, um, it's a pot lock in it. But when it comes to Karim Benzema, you, you presume he's meant it. And, and Pogba's goal. I mean, we've spoke a lot about Pogba this tournament and how we can't replicate this this form for the national team for his for his club. And it is strange, but he's when he's on that form, he, he's a joy to watch. And he's probably been a pick of the tournament, even though they've been out at this stage for, for an individual performance and, and stuff like that. He's, he's really good. Definitely, Rory. All the credit credit in the world. We need to go to Switzerland for for getting through that game and beating the world champions, but. France are kind of the talking point. What do we think went wrong in the France camp and what was your overall thoughts in the game? Listen, I mean, if if that penalty goes in for Switzerland and they do go on to win it, I, I would be looking at it going, well, the shape in the first half made some changes. He went to a back five. I, I just don't think it worked. He's then changed it. Now, to counteract that, they then go 3-1 up in a formation that they're familiar with. So, I don't know, you know, listening to the, to the guys talking at halftime on the TV, they're saying it was a mentality thing and an, and an attitude problem. I don't know if I've seen that. I, you know, I could see each other, I could see all the French players getting frustrated at each other and, you know, wanting to do well almost. But as Shanker said, when they go 3-1 up, game management at that level yeah, yeah. is has got to be better, I think. There's no way in the world, um, if you're 3-1 up and you look at the defenders France have got, or even the leaders throughout the team, and you've got Kante and your team, the best old midfielder in the world, to that you should be conceding another two goals. But credit credit to Switzerland, because listen, I've been there at Parkhead and Ibrox when you look up and that team that you're playing is so much better than you and you're 3-4-1 down. Mentally, it's it's tough. So for Switzerland to go 3-1 down, to look up, see Pogba, see Kante, Kimpembe, Mbappe, to see all these players and still believe they can get back into it, that, that is, that's an incredible uh, mentality to have. So I, I wouldn't really Swiss out going forward. I'm saying they can go on and win it, but there's always one team that seems to gain momentum and just get through. And Severovic as well is quickly gaining a reputation of being that guy you'll always remember from um, a particular tournament. Um, but what I would say as well is some of, I mean, Mean Shankers have discussed that a few times. He's bold to, to, you know, the one Mbappe misses and he kind of kids on, he's injured because he's a bit embarrassed. <laughs> um, that pass from Pogba is frightening. And McCoy said it on the commentary, he should bend it in me. Right yeah, he's right foot. He's right so he needs to go there. The way to pass, the vision, the execution, Pogba was 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 different class. Um, everybody likes to see an underdog win, but I must say I was a little bit disappointed to see France come out because I wanted to see more of them. I, I really enjoyed yeah. watching them. Uh, Benzema, Pogba. Again, everyone likes to see a dark horse going through, but I, I, I'm, Pogba is he's just a different person. I, I, I get so frustrated watching when he plays for Man United. Do you think that's because um, Canty's there? Like just because he's got that kind of license to roam because can't he's there kind of doing the defence nah, I don't think so he, he takes a lot more risks with United he gives the ball away he, listen you do get players who come who do look very casual when, when you watch them and it you know kind of gives that shout from the stand that he's no trying or whatever else I don't believe that but you watch him playing for France and he's everywhere um, he doesn't give the ball away he doesn't take too many risks and when he does take risks he takes them at the right time it just it does seem to swagger about a little bit at Man United, which again from a, an onlooker's point of view, and you know, never played at that level before. But it's frustrating when because I, I would tune in to watch that Paul Pogba play for Man United. Mm. Um, I, I don't switch the telly on on a Sunday if Man United are playing as a point of watching Paul Pogba. If Pogba was playing for France, I would make a point to turn the telly on so I could watch him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kelly and Mbappe. against Pogba already. Have I played against them? Uh, well, he he played against me. <laughs> I, think, I, think I would say I would say I would say Pogba. He's not the only one. You could you could pick out 
Shakiri yeah. and plenty of other players who are so much better for their uh, national side than they are for their club team. I think it's it's funny with United at the moment because I think tactically they're all over the place and they play a lot, um, you know, with the, with their hearts on their sleeves rather rather than any kind of tactical nuance. I think um, you struggle to pick many out the French squad though. If you look at Benzema, Kante, you look at Mbappe, Kimpembe, they're all playing at a, a good level and they're playing yeah. really really well every week. But Pogba but, goes into that team and is better than. Bruno Fernandez yeah. is opposite, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's had a poor tournament for high standards compared to what he's had for club. It must just be certain players get a get a lift and stuff like that. Didn't they? It's, it's strange and nobody will be able to answer. He he probably doesn't even know his, himself why it why it's like that. It's, it's strange. I would love to. Although I don't really like Man United, but I would love to see watch the Premier League going and see. Pogba telling the performances on it every week just because of the type of player he is. Yeah. Kelly and Mbappe, Oli, what's, what do we think of, of his tournament? I know he's obviously missed the penalty last night and you could see, psychologically, you could see, I think, it, it just kind of shot him completely. But what did, do we think he was he's tired or just off the boil in this tournament? What do we think was wrong with Mbappe? Um, I was, I was, I'd put a bet on Mbappe to be player of the tournament. I think everyone was expecting more than we saw with him. I put... I was saying on Twitter the other day, parallels between him and Harry Kane. Uh, they've just not shown up until obviously today, but we'll get on to that later. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things I've heard behind the scenes um, from digging around. Him and Benzema apparently don't get on in the, in the French squad. And obviously uh, talks going on with Paris Saint-Germain as well, where his future lies. He's got a year left on his contract. Maybe that was playing on his mind. Then again, how old is he? He's 20. You know, he's, he's got the whole world in front of him. And maybe there was too much pressure on him. You have to maybe dig into the French newspapers and say what they were saying about him before the tournament. Maybe the pressure got to him. And, you know, the penalty, he, he was the fifth choice to take it, wasn't he? So yeah. it, the pressure's all on him. And, you know, it, it was a terrible penalty. Good save from Sommer, though, to be fair. He just done that. What, what do you use? What's your thoughts on this? Because I see Ronaldo done it before and he done it. See when Spain beat Portugal in the... It was either the World Cup or the, the one of the Euros, and Ronaldo waited. He had the fifth penalty, and he, and eventually went out of the tournament before he even got a chance. Do you think he's hitting the fifth penalty because he watched the what he thinks he's got a chance of winning it for them, or do you think that's the order? Because see, if I'm Mbappe, who's a a striker, if I'm the manager, I'm wanting him to step up first or second as as one of my top strikers and hit the penalty. But yeah. for me, it looks as if he's he's trying to wait and hit the, the winning penalty almost to. Be the hero kind of thing. I, I, I don't know what your thoughts on it. I don't know. I'd imagine. I'd imagine Deschamps is quite a, a regulated man. I'd imagine he have his order pretty much set out. I don't think Mbappe can quite claim to be, you know, the the Ronaldo quite yet. He's going to be the glory for that team because, as you said, that French squad all over the pitch. It's got talent. Any one of those, if anything, Pogba would be, would be the one taking the fifth one, wouldn't it? Does keep Mbappe the defender goes and hits the fourth one. He did, yeah, more, that's true. So uh, I, I'm wanting my former players, then midfielders and whatnot, going to hit penalties before my defenders. That's strange. Uh, plus, they all score plus shankles. What? I could understand that if Kimbembe or these defenders missed, they all smacked them. No, the I'm no, I know, I'm not saying. <laughs> obviously, I'm not saying anything like that. Whether it's a bad, I'm just saying, as my manager, I'm, I would prefer if my attackers are confident and going to hit the. First penalty, and can see if it was a game. See if it's a game. Keep him, but he's no going to up for, for hitting a penalty in ninety minutes. Know what I mean? You're working in Barbie or Benzema hitting your penalties. I don't get why they're hitting later on in the in the order. I, I just I think it's because it looks as if he's wanting to be the, the match winner. Well, and just got him scored his penalty. You think? Maybe, maybe it's it's a good headline if it works. <laughs> it's yeah. but. Switzerland move on to play Spain in the quarterfinals. We'll do our, we'll we'll look at all four quarterfinals briefly at the end of the show, but we'll move into today's action. Obviously, there's a big game today at Wembley. Ollie is buzzing as we see England two, Germany now. Raheem Sterling and Harry Kane with the goals to give England their first win over Germany in a major tournament knockout stage since 1966. Ollie, England are now the favourites to win the Euros. And is that fair? Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I'm, I'm an extraordinarily pessimistic England fan. I was not thinking we were going to win today at all. Um, pleasantly surprised. 
with favourites to win. I think you, you've got to back it. You know, you've, you've got to get behind the team and, and I think manifest it somewhat because in previous tournaments before going back yesteryear, England fans wind me up more than anyone else, despite me being one, because they're so negative, particularly in the press, you know, the tabloid press, the amount of sticks Sterling's got, Kane's got, Southgate's got. The only thing they can do is shut them up by proving them wrong and scoring goals. So you've got you've got to believe in it and you've got to want it to happen. Yeah. Were you impressed with the performance? Um, first half, no. Second half, yes, I guess. It was like the last half an hour. I think we kind of turned it on and maybe got a bit of confidence back. Extremely nervy opening 10, 15 minutes. Um, Walker has got a mistake in him. I do like him as a player. I think he should start, but he's got a mistake in him. He looks a bit flamboyant and a bit uh, ropey at times. Phillips, he had one good game against Croatia and then since then... I, I don't I don't particularly back him. Um, him and Rice got yellow cards quite early on and I thought one of them was going to get sent off. Um, yeah, I wasn't... It's, it's weird with England because throughout the tournament, I don't know what you guys think, but it's been overly unconvincing. But then at the same time, we haven't conceded any goals. Um, I've kind of consided to the fact we've got to leave Southgate to do, it, to do it. He kind of seems to be doing the right thing at the moment. So it's just go off his, get off his back and see what happens. Rory, how big a win is that for England? Um, listen, it's, it's a huge win. Um, psychologically, to beat the, even just beating the Germans, I think obviously that's a, it's a massive thing for England. Uh, they've struggled to do it for a long, long time. Another clean sheet um, is, is a big plus for them as well. They're not particularly great to watch. They don't play free-flowing football. When you look at their squad and they're starting to live in, it baffles you at times as to how they can't be like that. I think Southgate is he's kind of sitting on the edge of... He's a tactical master, uh, magician when he gets it right. So, for example, today they're all hailing him, saying he got all, everything right and everything spot on. Whereas against Scotland, he, he pretty much adopted the same tactic and the same way of playing and yet was you know criticised to be on belief because of the performance they, 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 they turned in that night. So I think at the last World Cup, England, its times were really impressive. And I think had they gone out slightly early at the World Cup, England could still be optimistic based on what they'd seen. I think he's running the risk based on performances that Listen, see if they were to go out to a Sweden or Ukraine, uh, Ukraine or not play particularly well. I think he's going to have to win it to to um, come away from it with England fans thinking, you know, it's been a great tournament because, listen, the, the, in a league season, you know, five, six months of the season, managers look at performance. And when it comes to the last two months of the season, it's about results. Um, in tournament football, you need results. And you need results quickly. Ah, you want momentum, but you can't afford to to no win. I think England are just doing enough. I think that they have a select a group of players there who will take an unbelievable amount of belief. But what I do think is on Saturday it'll be a completely different game. I think we'll almost in a roundabout way be a lot more pressure when they play Sweden or Ukraine. They're going to feel the pressure to perform, feel the pressure to win. Feeling the pressure to win is, and I'm not saying that wasn't there against Germany. Of course, the expectation is they should win. However, I don't know that the expectation would be there that, that they could and will win. So, I listen. It's an interesting one. I, I haven't been impressed with them. They've not been good to watch. I've not enjoyed watching them. Um, but they're doing enough, and Southgate has done um, has done really well so far in terms of getting them to where they are. So it's, it'll be interesting on Saturday to see how they set up and how they play. I would quite like to see the Sancho's, your, but maybe that's that's us as layman speaking when it comes to coaching. Southgate obviously has a lot more insight into why he's doing this, but I think they're crying out for a Sancho, but maybe that's just from my perspective because I get bored to tears. Watching no, own team. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I like, I like fast forward, you know, kind of uh, playing football as well. Um, but if you look at Portugal 2016, Greece 2004, they, they all played quite boring 1 0 victory football as well. Defensive teams. Yeah, they had to. They had to. England don't have to. Yeah, I, I know they don't have to, but they're doing it and it's, it's working so far. And yeah, you know, if, if it works, you're going to do it, aren't you? Um, I, I was lucky enough to go and watch Dortmund play Monaco 
couple of years ago in Sancho who was playing then, and he was the best player I've like, like, probably seen in the flesh. He, he was that amazing. And I would, I would too love to see him come on at some point. Shan kills Jack Grealish was the man that came on. Obviously, it was a big cheer on the crowd, and then he came on, and he did play up. He did play a massive part in getting those two goals. Obviously, he played the part the the cross for Kane second. How bigger bigger performance was that from England to get that result? And obviously, Jack Grealish going to make the difference. Well, first and foremost, as as Rory says, at this stage of the tournament, and you know, mid the tournament, it's a, a results business, and you know, Rory's saying about the the free flowing football, attacking football, and all that, but. At, at this stage, you're just results one 0 grinds and stuff like that gets you to the quarters and semi finals. You're going to take it all day, and and I think my, my point gets... more with that. My point more with that was that if England don't win it and they continue to play that way, there will be sections of the England support who will want Southgate to leave. Whereas if they were playing fast flowing football and maybe got to a quarters or a semis, I think people would back him. So my point wasn't that it's not working. It was more that I think the way it's they're playing will put more pressure on Southgate if they don't win it. Aye, 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 I take your point there. So. A bit like uh, um, Maurizio Sarri at Chelsea, like he won the uh, Europa League, didn't he? but they still hated him when he got the uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I, I think the performance is really says it, wasn't it? Flattering. After the first five minutes when when Germany were, were kind of creeping up the pitch, I'm thinking they've already been for a game. But see, after that, without doing too much, I thought they were kind of in control. A couple of chances we I think it was Werner just before half time, and then Miller in the second half. But other than that, I, I thought they kind of contained Germany pretty well, and I thought Southgate got everything spot on. He, he changed the the shape of the, the team to kind of almost suit suit Germany's shape and kind of match them up. And it and it they were getting a lot of joy in the wide areas against Hungary with Kimmich and I think it's Gorsons or Gorsons, and and England kind of stopped that. They they won the really in the game an awful lot and I thought they got it spot on uh, Sterling Kane's come on there's a lot of criticism I think, I think Kane I don't know there's just something about him it looks like he's maybe lost like a yard of pace or, or some he's, he's dropping too deep and I was impressed with um, Saka that, that started I thought he was actually done pretty harsh again picking off for Grealish but then Grealish comes on and, and does really well and almost sets up both of the goals, he set one up anyway, so it's it looks like a, a master stroke for, for Southgate. But I still think there's more to come to. See when you you see them and they've they've grounded all these results by no no like setting the the hair in a light. So I think there is more to come. And if and if everything clicks, then it, could, it looks like Ukraine now because they've just scored in the last minute of extra time. So if they go and in the Ukraine, who who I actually think they would. They probably would take over Sweden, considering Sweden start to the. Absolutely, the I, th- I think England would prefer a you know, Ukraine, and I think it. If if everything can click for England, they're quite capable of going to win comfortably. But now they're on the, the reverse side, where all the pressure is on them, as Rory says, to perform and and kind of get too much. I I think this group of England players are are have got. I said it earlier on. It's no that they don't care. It's just. They're quite young and and they're taking everything in their stride. Whereas the, the group's previous England players felt the pressure uh, before the tournament. Whereas I think the likes of Grealish, Mount, Sterling, Saka, Rice, Phillips, players like that are, are kind of believe in their ability and and they almost take the take the pressure on their stride and they kind of thrive off it. And you've seen the stadium got a lift when when Grealish was coming on. They were crying out for him and. And as I said, it looks like a master stroke for, for Southgate. But I don't think I, I listen to the pundits in the studio. I don't think Southgate will be a lot of managers will be like, right, we put on Grealish, right, we'll start him the next game. I don't think Southgate's like that. I think he he's no stubborn, but I think he'll he'll not be bullied into to doing what fans want or what media want. I think he'll do it his own way and, and that's the way. And see when you see England bench, they probably get the str- strongest, strongest bench. And in, in the tournament, I would say for, for players coming off, like flair players coming on, say say thing one to go in the way, you can bring on a Mount, a Grealish, a Foden, a Rashford, players like that. So they're in a really, really good position. And and as Rory says, if if they don't go and get to the final or even more so go and win it now, 
then you could almost see it as a failure, especially with, I know they go to Rome next, but the majority of games are, have been at Wembley, six games at Wembley. I don't think they'll get a better chance of winning a major tournament. Uh, Tell you something, Shan, I would have put my mortgage on Muller scoring that chance. Aye, no, aye I'm, I'm, I'm the same, mate. Absolutely. You almost, yeah. almost kind of were, were settled, right? It's going to be 1-1. One, one there was I no doubt in my mind. He's, he's, he's the one guy as a German... Know that I'm a German. Um, that you would want, <laughs> that you would want to be going through in that situation with the experience he's got at these tournaments and at club level. I just, it didn't even cross my mind that he was going to miss. Ah, I know. I, I, he's quite composed and stuff like that as well. So, it, see, be fair, see when he was running through, he did look like me running in treacle. To be fair, <laughs> it looked as if he was going to get caught. But at least he took caravans in his back, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I was like you. I, grab a charger. I was almost. Uh, Almost certain that it was going to be one money. See, when that didn't go in, I think you almost kind of knew it wasn't going to be. I think, I think it was like, you I see Raheem Sterling, was, you see kind of Raheem Sterling, aye, and then he gave like, away the pass. And I seen a sense of relief, relief I kind of dropped to, the, dropped to the floor. And when that didn't go in, I, I kind of knew it was England's night. And then Kane finishes it off, gets his goal, and that could almost come in and give him confidence. I think this England team are, are losing. Over this after that uh, victory, and, and it, they're going to be playing Ukraine now, as, as you yeah. just see Ukraine's yeah. one two one. So I think I think they'll be they'll be very pleased with that. Yeah, what impressed me today was uh, in the second half, particularly was Southgate's game management. I think yeah. the all tournament is just been pretty sublime, and maybe something that hasn't been noticed too well as well. But yeah, I'll definitely take Ukraine over Sweden, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, well, see, we'll, bringing on players like Jordan Henson and that as well. There's no many teams that have got. Get the ability to, to be able to bring a, a Premier League, Champions League winner off the bench to kind of throw things up. It, see what we're talking about with Spain and France game management. Southgate's done the opposite. He's he's new, right? It's getting tight. Bring on Henderson to throw things up. And stuff like that. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of. Yeah, as you go back. Just at big times as well. Pickford, he's come under a bit of scrutiny in the last few tournaments. That save from Werner was. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Havertz volley. That was quite a good save. Yes, yeah. Well, it was right in the middle. He hit it over the bar, didn't he? Yeah. Right. Annie, I've always the, backed him. Yeah. Annie, you eat my words a wee bit because I tipped Germany to win at the start of the tournament. Rory, what do we think went wrong with the Germans? Um, I don't think they got off to the best start. I think they lacked momentum, lacked a little bit of belief. And see if I'm being totally honest, if you look at their, if you look at their group stage, they were beaten from France. Um, they scraped by Hungary um, to nick a point to get through top bottom line is they just weren't good enough and the, the best team won today overall um, there wasn't a lot between the two teams in the in the first half but England took their chances when they come along they were clinical they were ruthless uh, Germany hadn't been clinical or ruthless all tournament they'd chipped goals all tournament I just I just don't think they were good enough and I don't know if maybe Maybe the manager's been there a bit, a bit too long, but they, they, I don't know. They didn't seem... I, I watch Italy. I watch England. Uh, I watch these other teams, and there's just... Germany looked a little bit like we've been there and done it before. That's the kind of feeling I got from them, um, which I'm sure wasn't the case when you're in their camp and you're in their dressing room, but I don't know. They just lacked a little bit of energy as well, I would say. And I, I just I just think they fell short quality-wise in the end, and... They didn't, they didn't play well enough or win enough games to, obviously, with the knockout stages, you need to win. And England England deserved to win. I don't think, you know, Joachim Lowe's been there long enough. He knows what he's doing shape-wise, tactically, formation-wise. You can't look at it and go, well, the manager doesn't know what he's doing. You can't look at the players and go, there, you know. I, I, I just feel like none of them really believed it was their time, whereas you look at other countries. I watch Italy and they're, you know, they're diving in front of everything to you know and going forward and just a number of things. I, like I said, I love watching Italy. I think they'll go on and win it, but I just don't think that Germany um, were good enough, and that's the bottom line. And I think that you can pick any formation you want, and you can pick any team you want, uh, personnel wise. I I just think there's better teams at the tournament than Germany, and I think that was proven in the group stage, and it was proven today. I think the quality of the player in the German national team is is decreased. Uh a good bit for previous national teams when you like Miller's probably kind of one of the lasting ones in the, in the kind of old guard. A lot can be said about Ozil but with Germany it was good 
Lamb, Podolski, Closer, stuff like that. I just think they've no got see Closer scored guaranteed goals every tournament. I mean, Werner has been in pretty shocking form, to be honest. Uh, this tournament it's a strange one, that. Werner starting, I thought it was a strange one. I, I, who, who else have they got? I mean, they could, they could start Gnabry, uh, Gnabry through the middle, but he's not really a, an out-and-out out number nine, I would say. Uh, that is strange. I just I don't think Germany had anything through the whole tournament today. Yeah, they, they, haven't got a, yeah, they haven't got an out-and-out out striker you can rely on, put it that way. Yeah, definitely. But as Shankar said, it's going to be Ukraine against England and Rome on Saturday night. Ukraine got through an extra time for a 2-1-1. Sinchenko gave, them, gave Ukraine the league. Sweden come back with Forsberg and then an extra time. In the last minute, Artem Dobak gave Ukraine the, the lead to send them through the quarterfinals. Oli, you met, you were quite happy there when you, you heard Ukraine were going through. Is that the best of the two options, do we think? Absolutely. Um, Sweden, I've watched all their games and they're stubborn as hell normally, usually. Uh, <laughs> Defensively sound, uh, Isaac and Kudelski up front. Uh, they, they've got something in them. They got the point to prove. They're young. They're ambitious. They're probably part of the next Swedish generation. Um, you know, stubborn counter attack. They could easily get a, a late minute goal with past England. Um, and we don't have great history with Sweden. We've played them a lot over the last twenty years. You go back to the Sven Joran Eriksson days um, when they beat us four two. Zassan's overhead kick from Mars out. Um, you know, we, we haven't got great history against them um, other than the last World Cup, obviously. And I just think they'd be a bit stubborn. I do, I do agree with Rory. We haven't really seen England play well. Um, England against a stubborn team, it's it's never going to be glorious looking football. And then before you know it, we panic and concede a late goal. Ukraine, on the other hand, I can't say I've seen too much of them play, but if I was Raheem Sterling or Grealish, I've just watched them play there. I'm thinking, well, they've played 120 minutes. They're tired. I'm not sure what team South is going to choose, but it's probably going to have a couple more creative players than what we saw today. He's just going to say, go out there and play. And it'll be like, I don't want to say this, but it'll be like a, just more of a casual game. You know what I mean? So they'll, they'll go out and do their thing rather than it be, fuck, it's Germany, who we haven't beaten since 66. It'll be Ukraine, who we've not got too much of a previous you know, relationship with. Yeah, I think uh, Southgate could bring the changes for this game as well. I, yeah. I agree with, with Ollie, especially them playing 120 minutes. I mean, Ukraine is not getting the luxury of of going and swapping with four players and fresh legs and stuff like that. And I think Southgate's got that in him. As I said before, he's not going to... I don't think he's going to give in to the media and stuff like that. I mean, they're playing the players that they want, but I think he has got it in him to go and swap four, four or five players and and I tell them that's because Ank England's similar. Ank England's like got like for like players where they're bringing it, taking off quality and bringing in quality. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll tell you what, this would be a great game for Sancho. If he starts Sancho yeah. on Saturday, he'll be like, right, sorry, sorry I haven't played you the last four games, but here's easy time. Make it, make, yeah. make a name for yourself, and he'll be running at you know the, the Ukrainian defence all day long. Definitely. Rory, what was your thoughts on Sweden Ukraine? The actual game itself was actually quite entertaining. Um, Ukraine have actually got some good players in the wider areas. They use the ball well. They switch it from side to side. They use, they use the full, uh, they use the full pitch really well. Um, they tie our teams down. But listen, I would, I would definitely back up what Ollie said there. I think that from an England perspective, um, if you're playing against Sweden, you know that you're going to need to try and feed the ball between the lines. Uh, they're going to sit back. They're going to be compact. They're going to be organised. One of those ones where it's not particularly enjoyable to watch. Whereas Ukraine, I think, play more expansive football and they've got players who are capable of sc scoring goals from nothing, which England will need to watch out for. But I think it will give England offensive licence to be a lot more creative and I think we'll get a lot more space. And I, I believe that you'll see a different Harry Kane with that goal he scored and also with, like I said, the U the way Ukraine play. The one the one thing I would say is Ukraine are actually quite entertaining. Like I said, Yarmolenko um, and a, a few other players are... They're good, they're good players and they're capable of scoring really good goals and uh, they work the ball really well. They're, they're technically good. So, and a team, a team almost with nothing to lose is a team to be feared because I think they've now hit. They are, they've now had a successful tournament for for me. Uh, they're in the quarter. They're in the quarterfinals. Their nation will look at that and go brilliant. 
they'll probably approach that England game with, listen, lads, go out, enjoy the game, express yourselves, and they've got the players who can who can produce. So that is the one we think England might need to look out for. But I agree with what Oli says. I think that the way Ukraine play compared to Sweden, that that you know English fans will be will be happy with the result tonight. Yeah, definitely. But that that means that the round of sixteen is over and the quarterfinals are set in stone. Switzerland play Spain and Belgium play Italy on Friday night, and then on Saturday we have Czech Republic, Denmark, and Ukraine versus England. Shankers, what's the what's the standout of that that draw? I think Belgium Italy has to be the standout. I mean, we were talking all day there, and I was saying how you you just want the the big nations in the, the last stages of the tournament for for the quality of viewing, but also I like our underdog story. So to see uh, Denmark and, and Czech Republic have a chance to get into the semi-finals. Uh, England's got to fancy themselves to get to the final in, in that side of the draw. The last stage's slightly tougher. It's uh, Spain, Spain, Switzerland and Belgium, Italy, you say. So it's a tough one. You've, you've got to look at it and go, right, you fancy Spain on paper getting through and then Belgium, Italy is a tough one to call both, both top teams. So it's a kind of I toss the coin that one for me. So that side's slightly tougher uh, in the draw, but Belgium at least pick of the bunch. And it's a quick turnover for, for the likes of these players, uh, the England players, especially Ukraine, putting 120 minutes to then go again on Saturday with the, with the potential to, to be gone again next Tuesday, Wednesday. So I, I suppose that's the, the benefit that England have got with, with the big squad that, that they have, in, in my opinion. Definitely. Ollie. Who's are you confident that England are going to reach the final? Um, I wouldn't say overly confident, to be honest. Um, but I back him, if that makes sense. I back him to get there, but I'm not overly confident. I think um, you're quite right. Ukraine have had a squad that have been together for quite some time. A lot of players in there who played at youth level together. Uh, Shakhtar Donetsk, uh, Stepanenko, is a good pivot in midfield. And uh, yeah, a team, a team with nothing to lose seems to be fairly quite right. I don't expect a high-scoring game. I think maybe England 1 or 2 nil, And then Denmark or Czech Republic. Um, and with what's happened to Denmark in there, they've got, you know, the whole of Europe <laughs> against the English, essentially, aren't they? They're waving the flag for the EU um, very much so. And it'll be a difficult game, but there's no reason why we can't get there. We, we should get there. Whether we will or not, we'll see. Rory was... against the EU's the march that everybody wants to see anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, having said that, I don't even know if Denmark are in the EU. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not actually. So, I mean, yeah. Rory, what stands <laughs> out? What stands out to you in the the quarterfinals? Um, listen, it's it's a difficult one because you look at the you look at the bigger teams. I would definitely agree with Shankers. Uh, Belgium, Italy stands out as as the two biggest nations there. However, I have to say, I've I've really enjoyed watching all the last six all the last sixteen games. I, I've enjoyed. You know, for different reasons, all the goals last night and things like that. Um, but even Ukraine, Sweden tonight, I, I really enjoyed watching that. But on paper, Belgium, Italy de- definitely stands out. Um, bye. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to looking forward to them all. Um, it's interesting as well. Czech Republic have done really well, um, which, given that you know, as a nation, for three or four months we've been building up to that one game against the Czech Republic, saying <laughs> it was do or die for that one game. Um, we probably lost sight of how good these nations can be and how, how gifted some of their players are. Boy, Shek scoring again. So, aye, that'll be an interesting one, but I'm certainly looking forward to a weekend of good football. Definitely. He just quickly on the thing, um, i just seen it because they come up on the screen. I thought Harry Maguire was absolutely outstanding today. It was. He was a rock, mate. Absolutely yeah, rock. Definitely. Definitely. I've got a... I've got my brother-in-law is a huge Man United fan. I don't follow them all that closely, but he said in a season where... You wouldn't think it if you didn't watch them every week. Harry Maguire has been exceptional. I uh, comes under a lot of criticism and maybe it's maybe price tag and, and what no, but, but they're up finished second in the league and and he's I don't, is that his first game in the tournament or second game in the he tournament. He played ninety minutes against the Republic. So second game of the tournament as well, which which isn't easy. I thought it was absolutely brilliant tonight, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I don't know if you saw his uh, post match interview, but he was pretty much yeah. saying he he wasn't fit and he hasn't played for seven weeks. And if you could put him out before wins, yeah, um, what a, what a man! Definitely, but it's going to be another interesting weekend of the Euros as the quarterfinals take shape. Ollie, thanks very much for coming on the show as our special guest tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Much appreciated, chaps. Nice to Brilliant. nice to nice to join you.
Brilliant. Shankers, Rory, thanks very much. As always, pleasure. No, oh, thanks. No worries at all. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Know, we've already seen Ollie again, but hopefully he's, he's crying come the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a oh, cringe. <laughs> Mate, I was nearly um, crying tonight when Sterling gave that ball away. Bloody hell. <laughs> Brilliant. But we will be back next. We'll be back at the weekend with the, the Euro 2020 review of the quarterfinals. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Please follow our social media pages and subscribe on podcast and YouTube. Thanks very much, everyone. We'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>